Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh or carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now notice, notice these strongholds. These strongholds, this isn't sickness and disease. These are strongholds in the mind. So our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of mental ideas, doctrines, beliefs, traditions of men. So God's weapons, okay? Now, most of you know Ephesians chapter 6. It has to do with the uh, armor of God, okay? Now, of that armor of God, only one is a weapon. Why? Because we have the breastplate of righteousness, isn't that right? That's not a weapon. That's armor. That's a defense. We have the helmet of salvation. That's not a weapon. We've got one weapon, and that is the word, which is a sword of the spirit. Is that right? So our weapons, which is what? The word, which is a sword of the spirit. Our weapons are mighty through God. Why? Because our, that, that word that is our weapon is Jesus. Do you understand? He was the word made flesh. So when we have the word, we have everything he is. And in that word, now he is the sword. Now notice that sword is the word of God in your lips. It's his word coming out of your mouth. Do you get that? That's how you use the sword. Now, when you use his words out of your mouth, now if, and as a neat um, connection to this, uh, it actually tells us that when he... When Jesus returns, he will destroy the wicked with the sword that comes out of his mouth, which is what? The word of God. Amen? So now he's going to destroy the wicked with that. So what does, now understand, the word in his mouth will be just as powerful in your mouth. Amen? Just because it's in your mouth doesn't make it any weaker. So you have to know what that word is. When you have a knowledge of the word of God, now you have the knowledge of all truth. In other words, you're getting more and more knowledge of the truth. And whatever. Now understand, it's not you knowing. Knowing is not enough, right? We have to apply it. So it's not just knowing. It's what you've got to do, right, with that word. You can't just know, well, by his stripes I'm healed. You can know, you can know that and still die of your sickness. You, in other words, you have to apply that. You have to decide, this is true for me. This is his word to me. He was speaking to me. If there was nobody else around, nobody else on earth, he would be saying that to me today, that by his stripes, I was healed. And you have to decide that's true for you. And when you do, now it becomes part of you. And when you do that, let me tell you, if you believe, okay, here I start to walk around my deal like I always do. <laughs> See, that's about as demonstrative as I get right there. That's about as theatrical, okay? But... The minute you believe that by his stripes you were healed, you know what happens? You start to walk different. You start to talk different. You start to stand different. Why? Because you know that no sickness, no disease can attach itself to your body. Why? Because if God can heal you every second, he can keep you healed every second. Amen? Amen? And you know this thing does not have a right to come into my body. And you start to walk different and talk different. And it's funny because somebody will say something I'm telling you, you're not always easy to get along with whenever you believe the word. Because somebody, say, somebody will say something about something, you know. Back's killing them, feet's killing them, dying to go, scared me to death. All, they'll say something, and you hear that, and your, your initial reaction, which honestly, it's not you. It is the spirit of God in you that rises up. And he will rise up in you. And one of the things that I've noticed what he does with me, when he does that, you want me to agree with you on that? Really? Your, your back's healing you? Let's just agree right now. You're going to die from back. That's what's going to kill you. And, and people go, no, well, no, of course not. I'm just, oh, you're just lying. Okay, I see. And see, people don't like that. This is how Wigglesworth lived. It's how Dr. Summerall lived. It's how John Lake lived. It's how everybody that believes the word of God, once you believe the word of God, the devil has no inroads. Do you understand that? He has no inroads into you. Why? Because as soon as he tries to even do a probing attack, let, well, let's just see how we can get in. He'll say something, you'll rise up. No, you don't. No. No, we're not going to do that. And people won't like that. People like you to be wispy. They like you to be, you know, easily 
<laughs> bent. But God isn't that way. And so you will develop that in you to be able to go, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're going to do this. 